uh, like I said, in ZBrush, I would just load a Z sphere. Um, and then right away, you go to make poly mesh 3D. So that allows it to be sculptable. And I almost always go right into symmetry mode. So I can sort of see, you know, when you quickly lay out uh, an object like this, usually it's facing towards you in the correct way. And the center line is correct. And if you hit X, you can just kind of confirm that. And you can, you can further confirm its orientation by turning on the floor option, which sort of shows you the, the sort of bottom uh, of where the object sits. Um, and this floor mode is really useful. So if you go into draw, and I'll hit uh, F5 to zoom in in a second. If you go into draw further down, there are options for a front back view, right? Um, so if I go click on map one, then go to import, I have to locate my uh, file, of course. And then uh, I'll go into my reference folder. So I'll load the front view, which is here. And then I can go to back to draw, back down into the left, right, and I'll zoom in again and go to map one and then go to import and import my uh, lit view here. <coughs> so now if you rotate around, you'll see those two views, right? Now, like I said, it's important to try to center the, um, the mesh to the drawing or to the reference. And we have some really useful options here in terms of the, the um, oops, the elevation. I'm going to just adjust this, actually. Um, if I go to fill mode and set it to 2, you'll see the image becomes brighter. If it's set to 0, you won't see anything. So 1's kind of faint. 2's a little more self-illuminated. 3 is like fully self-illuminated with a see-through uh, mode. So um, again, very, very useful. And if, if your drawing is off-center, do not move the object. If you want it moving the object over like this, once you go back to sculpting, you see like, it's not symmetrical anymore. And that can cause a lot of havoc. And I think a lot of you guys did that on your <laughs> characters. Um, it's always better to try to adjust the drawing either by recropping it in Photoshop or uh, in, in this case, you know, I didn't do a nice, clean, symmetrical crop. This is from the Monday lecture. But if I go into the front front back, you can do a horizontal offset. So you can kind of nudge this thing into a more symmetrical. So I'm going to zoom in and just check via the nostrils, right? So this seems, um, I think, a lot more symmetrical. Yeah, it's close. It's Is it perfect? Not quite. But it's pretty close. Yeah, I think it's as close as I'm going to get. So one other thing I want to mention, actually, just jumping back to this, if you take a look at the front view, it's always kind of a fun exercise to do, I find. But if you take, let's say, this view, I'm going to hit Control-C, uh, Control-V to paste. Oops. Sorry, I'm on the wrong layer. Control-C, Control-V, and then, uh, oops, yeah, Control-V to paste. And then I'm just going to move it down. I'm going to roughly place it where it was. And if you hit Control T, and I'll move the pivot of that to the center here, and then I can go minus 100 on width. Right. Uh, first of all, it looks weird because of the shading, but <laughs> right, the face is not perfectly symmetrical. It just isn't. So, um, and if we try it the other way, so what I usually recommend is you basically start in symmetry because it's just way way faster to, to model that way. And then uh, what you want to do is uh, at the very end of your project, once you've kind of pu put all the details in, um, then you do like a quick sculpt over with a big move brush, a medium move brush, and then you can do like wrinkles and pores that are asymmetrical. So that's sort of a finishing uh, step. So like I said, right? Look at the shape of the head. It's not quite symmetrical. Now part of this too could be exaggerated by the lens. I tried to make the lens a 50 mil lens. Um, when I shoot this because that's closer to your natural view or your natural perspective and vision. Um, but it doesn't necessarily help you with the front view. It can get you kind of part, part way there. Um, so one way you could think about this is if you shoot a front and a side view, you could shoot it in a higher focal length like 70, 100 mil, 150 mil. And that way it'll be flatter uh, with less perspective. But 
again, you'll have issues no matter what um, trying to match perspective. So for me, this is sort of a guideline. And then after that, I just look at the photo images uh, very loosely and may kind of have them in the, in the background um, looking in perspective. So when I start this, my perspective is off. But once I get through the, the basics, I will then move into um, perspective mode. Okay. So first up, uh, what we can do, and by the way, I'm looking at this from a side view. So I think this is, might be where ZBrush was crashing for me the other day, is in my left, right. I wanted to flip this, and there is a little flip option for this. I don't know if it just doesn't like the flip option or not, but so it's right here in either front, back, or left, right. In this case, I went to the left, right, and went to flip. And then I want to do a little horizontal offset so my sphere sits a little more centered uh, to that, to that uh, reference image. So next up, I can basically scale the sphere. Let me move it up a bit. So I'm just kind of getting it you know, close to the volume that's here. Then I'm going to hit W to get back into sculpting, S to adjust my draw size, and I'm going to turn off the floor. So I'm basically just going to hit uh, Shift P as the shortcut. And now what I want to do, uh, this is in my custom interface, uh, so I've got Dynamesh over on the left side. But you can also access it under Geometry Dynamesh on the right side here under the tool palette. So I usually set my resolution fairly low, like 50 to start, maybe 70 or 80. Hit Dynamesh. And again, I'm, I'm in symmetry still, so I can sort of see where my front is. And I'm going to rotate and hold Shift. And then I'm going to control, click, and drag. I want to basically select the front lower uh, quarter of the sphere. So it's, it's approximate. It's not going to be super accurate. But then I'm going to hit control and left click. Or you can tap with your tablet pen. And if I hit uh, R to rotate, if you move this right away with the, the move tool, it'll just move everything. But if you hold alt, it allows you to kind of edit the pivot live. <coughs> Again, for me, I, I have a general guideline for this. I will usually rotate like 25 to 35 degrees. And you can hold shift, by the way, to, to snap this rotation. So I'll do 35. And then uh, I will control, click, and drag to clear the mask. Now with Dynamesh on, usually this will remesh this model. But when there's masking, uh, control, click, and drag the first time clears the mask. Control, click, and drag the second time activates Dynamesh to add new mesh. Right, or to redistribute the mesh. So keep that in mind, that if there's masking, control, click, and drag clears the mask. And when Dynamesh is on and there's a mask, right, you have to do it a second time to actually Dynamesh. If there's no masking, you just control, click, and drag. The other thing is uh, your pivot may have uh, changed or adjusted. And you can reset the pivot by Alt clicking on this little, it looks like a little uh, Google Map icon almost. Uh, it's like an upside down teardrop. If you hit reset, it'll reset to the symmetry the center of the symmetry of unmasked points. But if I hit X to turn it off temporarily, hit Alt and click on that icon, it'll center to the whole mesh. And if you hold Alt and click on the circular arrow, it'll actually realign to the world, which again can be useful to make sure that everything's kind of cleanly aligned. Uh, next up, I'm going to scale this inwards just a little bit, maybe like 10, 20%. I think 10% is OK in this, in this case. And next up, I will use. Um, Clip curve. So I'm going to go to clip curve. Again, I have it mapped uh, to zero on my shortcuts. And uh, you can also go into the brush menu, hit C for clip curve, and find it under the C category. Now, it gives you a warning. Uh, by default, when you hit uh, Control Shift, it's actually going to activate, I believe, the select rectangle brush. So basically, it's an alternate brush mode that allows you to hide or unhide or isolate parts of the mesh. But um, ZBrush has kind of like categories that are automatically mapped to certain shortcuts. So Alt is usually the inverse of what your brush will do, or it's an alternate function for what a brush does. Shift will activate smoothing. And there's actually about, I think, almost a dozen different types of smoothing brushes. So you can smooth peaks, smooth valleys, smooth stronger for when your mesh is really high poly. And in this case, um, there's clipping and slicing brushes, which I have, again, organized in here. There's clip curve, select rectangle, select lasso, slice, and trim curves. And there's actually even more than that. So when I select clip curve, it gives you a warning saying, now when you hit control shift, this will be the active brush. And I usually just hit skip note. 
So to clip curve, it's control shift, left click and drag or drag with your pen. And if you go from top to bottom, you get a shading on the right side, which means whatever mesh is to the right of that line will get flattened. It doesn't cut it, it just flattens it against the, the model itself. If you go from bottom to top, the shading will be on the left side and you'll see, uh, you'll get weird results in symmetry. But if I do it on this side, it'll um, flatten that way. If I go left to right, the shading will be on top. If I go right to left, it'll be on the bottom. So it's something you'll get familiar with if you do this enough times. Uh, a few other things about clip curve is if you control shift, click and drag, and you keep holding control shift while holding the left mouse button down, it snaps in five degree increments. But if you let go of control shift, then you have a free, freely movable angle. If you hit alt once, you get a curve point. Double click alt, you get a sharp point. Once, curve, twice sharp. Okay, so it's a really, really powerful tool. But for this case, it's just a simple line that I'm after. Yes, and this is the final function I'll mention is that, uh, so I usually go about like 10 degrees off. So 180 is sort of uh, a straight line in this case. And if I go to 190 or thereabouts, it's a decent angle. And if I hold space bar, I can actually move that clipping over a bit. So you can see very quickly the sense or shape of a face and a head emerging, right? Uh, the other thing I should mention, I'll just uh, jump over here. If we look on, Google has a lot of great stuff here. Uh, face proportions uh, for drawing. Again, these are based on anatomical generalizations. So they're not true in 100% of faces, but they're true in many faces. Um, the eyes, uh, maybe I'll look at a, a different drawing here. The eyes are roughly the middle line of the head. So that's one of the reasons why when I draw that quarter masking, right, it gets me to that point when I rotate it out. So the, the eye line will be right where this uh, division is, okay? The nose sits about halfway between that half. So the lower half of the head can be divided into another half. So the base of the nose, generally speaking, will run in the middle of this. And if you take this half of the half <laughs> from the bottom of the nose to the tip of the chin, um, the middle lip, uh, the lip line where the two lips meet is usually the one-third marker. And in some cases, depending on how, uh, what reference you're looking at, they'll sort of say, okay, well, th this lip line indicates one-third from the, the base of the nose to the bottom of the chin. The lip line itself is actually about halfway. So, again, these are general guidelines. Are they always true? Not necessarily, but. Okay, so next up, I will go to Dam Standard. And again, I have my Dam Standard brush, uh, sorry, clay tubes, I should say. Uh, clay tubes is mapped to number four for me. And again, you can go B for brush, C for clay, and find it in there. So again, the eye sockets are basically in this area. So I'm gonna hold Alt and uh, on an angle, just like I was talking about earlier with the eye socket. Uh, I'll go with a slightly smaller brush in this case. So I'm, I'm basically kind of building up that ocular cavity, okay? Now if we go back to the reference for a second, um, <laughs> let me just delete that layer. Uh, again, let's take a look at some guides, or maybe I'll use a, a brush. I should really be using my tablet, by the way. I'm just using a mouse, so there's some stuff that <laughs> may turn out kind of crappy here. But So again, if we take a look at the head, right, it's approximately one half, and you can sort of test this out just by kind of selecting a section of the head, control C, control V, move it down, right? That's pretty close to true, half the head. If we take, uh, let's say a marquee selection, so that's M for marquee, go from the middle of the eyes roughly to the base of the nose, control C, control V, hit V again to move. Now he's got a much uh, longer chin, and again, this could be an exaggeration from, uh, from the, uh, distortion of the camera, but go back to brush, okay? If we take this area, this is probably about roughly one third, right? So if we marquee select this, I'll just test this out. Control C, Control V, and then, oops. Control C, uh, grabbing the wrong step here. Control C, Control V. Right, if you doubled that, that would roughly give you your, your length, okay? So it's close, is it accurate? 
not necessarily. Is the camera distorting it? Possibly, right? So these are all things you kind of have to keep in, in, in mind. Now let's uh, check out our perspective, uh, sorry not perspective, but our floor option here. Um, so this is coming up a fair bit bigger than Julian's head, so I'm going to just move this thing upwards. Um, one last step I should mention, let's turn off the floor. I often like to kind of trim sort of where the cheekbones would be, so I'm back in clip curve. And we can do this sort of on an angle. Okay. Turn our floor back on so we can see the shapes here. And yeah, I may just scale this down just a touch and move it back in space just a bit as well. Now this is one thing that'll happen a lot is you'll need to kind of make uh, adjustments, um, make scale adjustments and things like that. So uh, next up, we can basically just grab a very large move brush and adjust our jawline. Yes, question. I only moved it horizontally. I did not move it from a front view, only from a side view. Because the pivot will stay centered uh, for the most part. As long as it's on, on that center axis, right? Then, you know, I'm not moving the model like this, right? Or turning up symmetry. I'm not moving it off like this. You see, the pivot is dead center. So it's okay for me to move it forwards or backwards. It's the side to side motion that you really want to avoid. Uh, not to say that you can't, but I would keep the pivot centered and use a move brush if I needed to move something at this point. In this case, my reference is fairly well centered, right? Now for the nose, one of my little dirty tricks <laughs> is to come with a masking brush. Oops, I should make sure I'm centered again. I'm going to hit X for symmetry. I'm going to go to E for rotate, hold Alt and pull this thing forward and then try to uh, oops, rotate this out. So I'm going to flip my mask. Clear the mask, which is control, click, and drag. And I'm going to probably dynamesh at this point. So I'll turn off the floor for a second. And I'm going to just um, up my resolution. Because I know at this stage I need a little more resolution for the nostrils, for the lips. Control, click, and drag. And we got a little bit more res. And let's go back into floor mode. So that's shift P. Now, uh, let me talk about this. Sometimes what people will do Sometimes what I will do, <laughs> instead of just doing this masking, is I will use clay tubes, right? Build up the shape, DynaMesh, build it up this way. And then we'll sort of smooth it back, right? And you can also, let's just uh, do that. And then you can start to get kind of a sense of the shape of the nose. Yeah. Okay, so something like that can sometimes work. I've also seen people do this, which is really interesting. Let me go back a bit, which is that they will, uh, again, I'll up my resolution just a touch because I'm getting into the nose. If we go into B for brush, I for insert, there's uh, two kinds of insert brushes. There's insert primitives uh, and there's insert primitives H. The H is for like a half object, so one end is open. So I usually just go the the, the, the first one. And I'll go to sphere. So what you can actually do is drop in a sphere for the tip of the nose. And we can, of course, adjust this back in space. And then I'll go back to Q, which is draw mode, and then draw in what would be the sides of the nose. Again, I'll position them. I may just flip my masking around because I may also need to adjust the slope of the cheek. So I'll go back to the move brush. So I'll smooth this back a bit. I'll just turn off the floor for a second. So clear your mask, control, click, and drag. And then we can uh, sort of smooth this out, blend it in, right? And then maybe go to clay tube. So there's a few kind of ways to, to go about this. Okay. And again, a lot of adjustments that go on here. So move brush, clay tubes, clay buildup, damn standard. These are kind of my common go-to. So I'm going to just roughly get the brow in place for now. And I'll go with a much larger draw size. So I'm going to hopefully grabbing more than just, um, yeah, more than just one small narrow section. You know, we want to make sure we grab a, a pretty decent 
uh, section of the mesh. So I'm going to just smooth out as well. I usually like to smooth out the sides of the head. Uh, the resolution is already getting, it's not super high, but um, it can be hard to smooth out some of these bigger shapes, um, you know, the higher res you go. So a lot of times I'll go into Lightbox, which I get to the, the comma key, and you can go to Brush, and there's the extended brushes. In this case, I often like to have Smooth Stronger available, and I have it mapped in my interface, but it doesn't always show up. And again, it warns you. When you switch smoothing brushes, it says now when you hold shift, this will be the default smoothing brush. So I'll hit skip, and now I've got smooth stronger. So now it'll allow me to really kind of blend in some of these harder edges to hopefully get a little bit better shape. But you guys see how quickly a face becomes apparent and visible and present in the sculpt when you start off this way. So I just think it's very, very useful. Uh, one of the things I learned actually about this, uh, like I said, that, that brush for some reason doesn't automatically appear and it's because it's not part of ZBrush's uh, startup. So if you go into your C drive under programs, wherever ZBrush is installed, Pixel Logic, I'll go to 2018 and I'll go to uh, ZBrushes and then we have these, these are the folders where these extras are located. I'm going to copy the Smooth Stronger so it will appear in my interface uh, from now on. I'll go back to ZBrush, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the main ZBrush folder, go to Z Startup, and go to uh, Brush Presets, and just uh, sort of paste that in there. And every time I load ZBrush now, it should automatically pop up uh, in my interface. Okay, so we'll turn back on our floor. Um, again, you know, things don't always match up perfectly, so I will just try to adjust the, the jawline and everything else. One other thing we could do is go to B for brush, I for insert. Uh, so B for brush, I for insert, and go to primitives again. And I'll go to cylinder. And roughly from the bottom, I'm going to rotate to the bottom view. Uh, insert something along these lines. And I'm going to hold Alt to uh, reset the pivot. And um, by the way, if you hold Alt on this, um, let me just solo this or turn off the floor again. If you hold Alt and pick a particular area, it'll actually align the pivot to that uh, particular um, orientation of the mesh. So now I can actually scale this up into the head. So let me just scale this a little bit narrower because I'm going to build up some forms on top of this. So I'm going to, uh, again, if we remember, control, click, and drag clears the mask. Control, click, and drag a second time will dynamesh this stuff together. Okay. So again, I'm on smooth, stronger still. So that really helps me kind of smooth this out. So for the, um, again, this is the under chin area I was talking a lot about. If we go to the move tool, hold alt, pull it down. For the mouth, um, <laughs> let's just take a look. So I often kind of go back and forth a few times with the mouth. So for the mouth, uh, if you look at the mouth construction um, in here, I really like this book, by the way. It's such a good book. You know, the mouth, I almost think of it as two cones. So there's kind of a slope that comes down on the upper teeth, right? It, it sort of uh, flares out. So it's kind of a conical shape from above and below, if you think about it really simply. And it's also almost cylindrical if you look at that area. Um, again, when you get into the finer details, there's a few more complex shapes. So what I often will try to do is use a clay tube brush. So right now I'm more interested in building up the volume and then I can adjust it after. I almost kind of sketch out sort of a, a mustache type looking uh, space and then I'll sculpt, sculpt it back. So it creates that right kind of um, sloping conical shape. And then I'll sort of do a smaller version of it underneath for the lower lip. Now, again, usually the lower lip uh, under is uh, overhung by the upper lip. So you don't want to make these, right? There should be a, a nice slight angle to these. Uh, let's just double check our reference. Again, I think Julian's proportions are a little bit atypical, uh, which is okay. So I may need to move his, again, if the tilt of the head is off, that can affect these proportions as well. So. You'll find you'll have to make these, you know, using a large move brush, you'll have to make some adjustments from time to time. 
So I'm just pulling that sort of shape down. Now I'll hit two to go to my, so two is my damn standard brush. So you can go B for brush, D for damn standard. And by the way, if you ever look at these menus, you can actually almost memorize a little sort of tr um, combination of shortcuts. So B for brush and then D for damn standard. And if you notice, damn standard is S. So you can actually go through the menus that way as well. And uh, after a certain amount of time, you'll, it'll kind of become automatic. So now if I go in, damn standard, I'm literally kind of just tracing this line. Okay. And then for the lip line itself, I have to go with a lighter intensity, like 10 to 20. So again, these lines aren't always as clearly defined as I'm making them, but at least for me, it's a landmark or it's a, an, an indicator. So I'll hold Alt, and trace this out. If you take a look, before, after, right? And then I'll uh, turn on floor again and just try to get a sense of that lower lip. I think that's the shape I'm seeing. I can't quite tell. Let's take a look at the other view. So again, depth is very important. Um, so I'm going to have to use the move brush. By the way, you can protect areas that are, you know, uh, working a little better. So I'll just, uh, from a side view here, pull the depth back to the right spot. You know, each face is, is very different and unique. So in this case, you know, he actually has, there's a little kind of hump there, and then there's even another little angle in here. So that's going to be one of those things that's a little tricky to sculpt, but it'll, it'll take a little bit of time in sort of subtle sculpting. Flip the masking around. So I'm going to use this Dynamesh again. So I've upped my resolution to 240. Turn off the floor. You can see there's a little line there from the the adjustment. So you know, I'm, you know, keeping things pretty vague right now. Um, again, if I need to redefine the nostrils, so this is one of the downsides of the smooth stronger brush. You can, I often will switch between them. So let's just uh, turn the floor back on. It looks like his nose comes back quite a bit. Just smooth this out. And even this uh, socket, we should kind of pull back for the brow. Whew. <laughs> That's pretty funny. What happened there? Yeah, this is one issue that can come up is like, this is all projection based too. So if you're on a flat view, you may not always be grabbing the right area of the mesh um, to sculpt on. So I think it'd be better if I just kind of do it in a free form three quarter view. And then, like I said, I know the depth has to come back quite a bit. So go to three, hold alt and push this back and in a bit. So we'll go to uh, back into floor mode here. Smoothing out as I go. Um, so I'll try to finish up. At least this is a first very, very kind of quick pass. So for the eyes, again, I'm going to work the sockets. I'll switch back to smooth stronger. So you see how, how nicely it kind of blends everything in. And again, I often try to get this deeper area right off the bat. So I'll kind of exaggerate that to begin with. Switch back to regular smooth. You know, there might be some stuff I want to tweak in the lips, so just soften some of these uh, edge loops a bit. Um, <clears throat> what I will do for the eyes is I'll start with a B for brush, I for insert, and you can pick H for the, uh, sorry, uh, T for the regular primitives. Insert a sphere, okay? Now if you want, you can look at the floor with this on. And I'll hold shift just to make sure that it's pointing straight forward. You have to be careful with this. You should drag from top to bottom. As soon as you go up a little bit, you'll get this. <laughs> so make sure your eyes are not oblong. Make sure they're fairly decent, clean ovals. And I like to start from the center of the pupil. Remember what I said, I like the eyeballs to kind of just be touching or just be overlapping 
the uh, what would be the bony region of the of the eye, and it should definitely be a little bit larger than. Um, that definitely should extend beyond the uh, openings of the eyelids for sure and then for depth always a good idea to place these things so one of the things I noticed is <coughs> I think it might be an issue with my setup but for some reason the eyes aren't quite lining up the same um, so I will stick with my jawline and all the the frontal view stuff I will stick with the alignment for the front view uh, but I'm only going to use the left view, so things might be off by a half a centimeter, by a couple millimeters. So I will not adjust the height here. I will only adjust the depth. You know what I mean? So I'm only looking at kind of where it sits um, front to back. So this is like the maximum protrusion of the eye here. Well, then I will uh, match that depth. Even though the height's a little different, I'm going to match the depth. The other thing to, uh, as well, a good clue when you're building a face, the corners of the eyes usually line up with the pupils. So again, I think there might be some slight um, perspective issues here, and I'm working in non-perspective right now. So I'm going to just, again, kind of vary things a little bit. And when you do an insert mesh, um, it will mask the other stuff that's there. So I'm going to basically go into split under subtool, split, unmask points, and the eyes are uh, safely protected on their own subtool, and I can divide them a couple times just to make them a little smoother. Um, so what I can do next, uh, yeah, I think they're still a little bit far apart, so I'm going to just bring them in a little bit more. And again, always useful to kind of check your model in perspective. Uh, usually, I will need to make some adjustments, uh, you know, because these front and side views they're they're not kind of perfect references because of the perspective issue. So. You have to kind of take a lot of this with a grain of salt and then maybe adjust it. Yeah, so maybe I'll actually leave the, the eyeballs a bit further apart and just, uh, I might even scale the head back uh, in terms of width just a little bit. I'm going to reset the head pivot. Okay, I'll just scale it a little bit wider. It feels a lot better. So yeah, it's at a certain point that I will break away from perspective because, pers again, these views working in perspective or working orthographically, they, they don't always give you the kind of truth behind the model. So you have to kind of use your own eye and work in uh, perspective a fair bit. Okay, so the eyelids, I'll just finish with this for the first pass of the model. Uh, I'm going to make sure I go back to the mesh. And... There's one of two ways you can build up the eyeballs. One, uh, or the eyelids, I should say, is to go to clay tubes and simply sculpt. So you're actually pulling mesh from behind the, the eye and kind of building up that form. So, you know, sculpting back, sculpting back and forth. That's one way that I often do it. And then you kind of get a sense of the, the, the bags under the eyes and stuff like that. So I'm just using Smooth Strong as well. And then I often will use like damn standard, and you can use it to actually kind of help define the eyelid area. And I sometimes will use it to also knock back the edge because there's actually a fairly sharp turn from the eyelid facing this way into uh, where it touches the, the eyeball. Again, we can uh, switch our floor off and on, turn perspective off. And again, this is just kind of me using the reference points that I have to get the shape. The shape is actually very important when it comes to the eyes. It um, gives a lot of characteristics to the face. And again, I'll watch the depth. The depth has to come back in this case. So I'm watching the depth and then making adjustments in the side view. You can hold Alt, by the way, in the Move Brush, and what it does is it um, moves it sort of uh, according to the object's normal angle. That basically means where the polygons are facing. It, it moves them in that direction. Okay, so I'm using damn standard, clay tubes, damn standard, kind of going back and forth. Turn off the floor again. Okay, so let's uh, do smooth strong and then back to regular smooth. 
So just like the lips, I'll often kind of go back and forth, back and forth to get a, a better feel for the, the shape. Because the shape of the lips, the shape of the eyelids really helps determine the characteristics of your face. And I like to often um, kind of draw down and out and then holding Alt. This is with Dame Standard, by the way. All right, so I kind of get a sense of the, the line of those. And let's just Dynamesh again so we get a little more mesh. So that's a rough uh, first pass. And like I said, the, the puffy region under the brow, usually we can kind of get this with a low inflate and we just kind of build this up. Up under here, smooth back a bit. Okay. Uh, going back to the mouth, these are all kind of quick first pass things that I do. Um, the chin, there's often a fairly big uh, indentation here. So I often draw an exaggerated version of it and smooth it back so I may just switch to smooth strong to kind of blend this back in so it's a subtler shape. I'll usually hit clay tubes so I may oops, uh, use clay tubes just to again knock this back a little bit more and I'll switch to the regular smooth and again I often kind of draw a bit of a v-shape here because there is those muscles underneath and again I want to blend it in a lot better so I'm going to just go to smooth strong and just kind of gradually blend that in. Clay tubes. So usually there's this protrusion here for the upper lips. For the cheek. So this is all really kind of quick stuff. And again, you want to check your model reference. So uh, let's take a look here. Always a good idea, like I said, look at the three-quarter view. Look at the front and the back. This can show you the slope of the face. This is why I like the, the back three-quarter views is that we get a sense of what the face looks like from that point of view. If you're looking at the reference, you can also go to see-through mode in ZBrush. So you can just quickly have your reference open and say, ah, oh, you know, I, I'm kind of getting some things right, some things not so right. So I'm missing, again, there's a volume in the cheek that's sort of missing here and the jawline as well. I'll just go with a much, I like to build these up gradually, so I'm going to go with a lower intensity. The other thing is when you see your stroke as well, if it's broken, up like this, you can check one of a couple things. The first thing is to go to freehand and switch the stroke. It may be on dots, it should be on freehand. The second thing is lazy mouse. Um, <coughs> so, by the way, if you don't have my interface, uh, you can go into preferences, uh, sorry, not preferences, under stroke, lazy mouse, all the stuff is accessible there. Uh, what lazy mouse was initially designed for is that when you wanted to make nice fluid lines, it would average out the stroke and give you this, if I increase the radius and the smoothing, It'll leave this big line behind and you get these like really fluid sort of smoother lines. But for brush strokes when I want them to be more sort of solid I would set my radius uh, and smoothing down to the lowest which is zero for smooth, one for radius. And my lazy step I usually set to 0 0.025. So what will happen now is you get a nice solid stroke in that uh, clay twos brush. So I need to build up the cheek, the jawline. I think the chin is okay, but it's all the stuff in terms of depth. It's not quite there yet. So I'm going to roughly. Yeah, I just I think it, it lends itself to uh, nicer shapes. I mean, you can change the alpha. That's the main function of the clay two brush is that square alpha makes it look like a strip of clay. Traditional modelers, if you actually look at um, Traditional sculptors, sorry, let me find my, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you look, they often use strips of clay. Okay, so why do they do that? Yeah, let's see if we can find some uh, examples. Uh, let's see. I know there's a few on, uh, yeah. Let's see, let's take a look at the face. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the way a lot of sculptors will do it is they'll lay down strips and they lay them down. Um, at least the good ones that I've seen, they basically lay them down in the way that I'm sculpting because it mimics the muscles, it mimics the anatomy. So, of course, you want to put the muscles in the direction of where the muscles actually lie or where the features lie. 
right? So I need to kind of gradually build up this, this jawline. And I'm using Smooth Strong to blend this in a little better. Uh, let's see, yeah, I think I'm overdoing it here, so I'm just going to smooth this back. So again, a lot of times in the beginning, there's going to be kind of a back and forth. Okay, yeah, I'll just blend this in. <clears throat> and then um, let's go back to clay tubes. So I think, you know, the cheekbone isn't quite built up yet, so I'm going to just smooth this back and build it up. I usually kind of come back from what would be the, the corner of the eye and sweep sort of down and forward. And again, it looks like he has more mass from what I could tell. Right. Oops. Um, his cheekbone is actually not at the high point. There's a bit more of a larger region down in the, the lower cheek sort of jowl area. So I'm just trying to keep that observation in mind. And yeah, I'll come back with a bit more aggressive smoothing. So I'm going to switch to the um, the smooth strong brush. So I kind of often move around a little bit in the face. Um, let's do this in perspective. So again, let me reinforce that you know little uh, chin area. Um, the nostrils often with damn standard come in on a diagonal, Dynamesh. The upper lip, again damn standard. <laughs> This is my go-to brush, one of my many, uh, one of my few go-to brushes, I should say. Hold Alt, and again, I've got Smooth Strong on, so I'll just switch to the regular Smooth and just soften that back a bit. Okay, so very quickly, as you can see, a face uh, really takes hold, uh, and it becomes much, much finer in terms of the volume, the shape. So it, yes, it is challenging; it is not easy. Turn off perspective, turn the floor back on. For one of the last steps, um, let me just adjust the back of the neck. Again, I'll switch to smooth strong so I can really just average this sort of stuff out. Remember, there's a, a mass under that hair for the skull, so I usually like to kind of get a sense of that shape in there. Again, I'm using a fairly large uh, move brush, and then I'll use uh, smooth strong and we don't want to <laughs> let's take a look there's probably some weird shapes going on in here eh, it's not terrible yeah but I usually like to really kind of work this out so it's not so kind of gross looking uh, again you know for the head you can also use uh, H polish I use this tool a fair bit and what it does is it helps you kind of find the planes of the body and I know you guys I think at one point did planes of the body in drawing maybe or in sculpting so that really helps you find, you know, where things should sort of change angle. So sometimes I'll do this for the cheeks. I'll be like, I don't know what's going on with the cheeks. I'll come in maybe with a little bit stronger brush and say, okay, this is a flat plane. This is a flat plane. Okay. And then I can rework from there uh, some of these shapes. You know, something else uh, I like to do. Let's take a look. One of the reasons I like the extreme lighting this is that crease line I was telling you about that. You guys see the shadow right here? This is where that protrusion is happening, and there's some attachments of muscles happening as well, as well as a ch transition from muscle to fatty tissue. So a little bit more muscle and fatty tissue here. Um, so let's take a look at that. And I'll finish this kind of like first pass off with, uh, so yeah, let's come in like so. A C frame up here. So we'll just really dial it back. And then I'll hit uh, two for the um, clay, uh, sorry, the uh, damn standard. So I just want to re emphasize the nostrils. And then I often like to do kind of my little jowl guide <laughs> so I can get a sense of where these things are moving. And then again, you can use just a, a regular smooth brush. I may go back to smooth stronger just to blend this in a little bit better. So you just have a much subtler. When you're older, those creases do get deeper, more pronounced. Okay. And final thing just for this first pass is the ear. So I'm going to go to uh, B for brush, I for insert, and then there's body parts. And I'll go to the ear. We have to do this, unfortunately, from the, the right side. Um, 
I'm just gonna do some more smooth strong on the side of the back of the head's kind of bugging me still. So I really like, you know, a lot of people I think ignore this, but I think if you ignore the rest of the volumes of the head, um, it can give you some really, really gross results. So you do want to make sure that things kind of transition and, and move or blend nicely. I can turn my floor back on and I'll left click and drag. Now, <laughs> this, <laughs> this ear is really, really kind of deep and big and I think it's mainly designed that way to just give you the option to scale it out. So I'm gonna actually um, try to scale it a little flatter. I'm gonna rotate it back as well and again, do a bit more scaling. And usually the ear kind of forms on an angle. So you can do this with the move tool or just the move brush itself. So there's two different moves, right? There's the, that kind of um, rotation translation tool, the gizmo, and then there's this. So if you've got like connected, um, so I'm gonna just, yeah, try to eyeball the shape here. Again, I'm focusing on the depth on this, not the, the height. So the left to right, not the vertical. Because with the vertical, I'm sort of setting up, I uh, should be setting up here. Because remember, my, my depths and heights don't always match. Um, so I want the shape to be roughly the same though. So I want to make sure that if there's any kind of uh, shape changes that I try to mimic them here. Okay, and then we'll turn off the floor for a second. So next up, what you can do is control tap and flip your mask around and then using the move brush, like I said, if you, if you move the brush right now, it's just gonna move things left to right or parallel to your screen. But if you hold alt, because the polygons are facing towards me, by holding alt, I can push the polygons so that they're moving away from me. Okay? And so we also wanna make sure there's a nice kind of space behind the ear because the ear does um, kind of have its own little back area. Something else I should mention too, if your earlobes are attached, right, then you wanna pull them out a little bit wider. Or pull them, uh, sorry, let me control click to flip. So you can pull them out. You can even go into inflate, plump up those little earlobes. <laughs> So you can try that out. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna leave them where they are. So what I'm gonna do next is control click to clear the mask, control click and drag to DynaMesh together. And we should be able to just kind of smooth the transition areas here, blend them in so they look a lot nicer. There. So we get rid of those kind of hard transitions. Okay. And you know, after this, it's mainly uh, refinement. So I'm gonna, Sometimes what I'll do is I'll check things like the jawline. So I may do an exaggerated version, like the ear still seems like it's sitting maybe a bit oddly. So I may go in between the two references at this point now, since I know they're not quite accurate um, in terms of their alignment to each other. So I may try to split the difference. This is where you have to use your own brain to kind of interpret things. So I'm gonna use uh, number two on my keyboard and try to just sketch out what I think is roughly the jawline here. So I want to kind of go under the jaw. Again, I'm doing this with a mouse, which isn't great, but then I'll just smooth that back. Again, I'm going to use the move brush to try to tweak some of these things a bit. Okay. So that's you know first pass of uh, of the head. Okay.